In today's episode, we go over three of the most unusual and bizarre deaths caused by animals. From being eaten alive by a school of piranhas, a woman exploded by the hooves of a horse, and a freak accident involving a spotted eagle ray that left a woman with a crushed skull. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. Welcome to Final Affliction. Deep in the heart of the Brazilian wilderness, a peaceful fishing trip turned into a tragedy. On a warm Saturday afternoon, in a rural area of Brasilândia de Minas, a small municipality located about 600 miles northwest of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, three friends decided to spend their day fishing at a lake. The trio, consisting of two middle-aged men and one 30-year-old man, arrived at the lake and began setting up their gear. The day started out peaceful, with the friends chatting and laughing as they cast their lines into the water. However, unbeknownst to the men, their peaceful day was quickly about to take a dangerous turn for the worse. After catching several fish by the shoreline, they noticed a low, buzzing sound in the air. The sound grew louder and more intense, until the three men were surrounded by a massive swarm of bees. The angry insects buzzed around their heads and bodies, their stingers ready to attack. The three friends realized they were in a dangerous situation. These bees happened to be Africanized honeybees, also known as killer bees, and are considered to be the most aggressive bees in Brazil. They are known for their highly defensive behavior and will attack in large numbers if they perceive a threat to their colony. They are very easily threatened by a variety of stimuli, including vibrations, loud noises, movement, and even the scent of certain perfumes or soaps. It's likely that the scent of the bait or fish the men caught drew the honeybees towards them, and the movement of casting a fishing line triggered a defensive response from the nearby honeybee colony. Panic set in as the bees started to swarm around them, stinging them relentlessly. The friends frantically tried to swat them away, but there were too many. The pain was intense, and they were getting stung all over their bodies. The three friends dropped their fishing rods and ran in different directions. The 30-year-old man, desperate to escape the painful stings, made a split-second decision and jumped into the lake. His two friends soon followed. Little did they know, the lake was home to a school of deadly piranhas. Piranhas are found in freshwater rivers and lakes in South America and are known for their voracious appetite, which can quickly turn them from a passive scavenger into a deadly predator. They feed on a variety of prey, including fish, birds, and even mammals, and are capable of stripping their prey down to the bones in just a few minutes. Despite their reputation, piranhas are not typically considered a threat to humans, but on this fateful day, they were. At first, the men took in a sigh of relief as the bees retreated after jumping into the lake. They were covered in huge welts, throbbing in pain from the bee stings, and the water temporarily soothed their skin. It wasn't long before they felt the sudden sharp pain of the piranhas biting into their skin, attracted to the tiny amounts of blood from the bee stings. The men now realized the danger they were in as the water around them became turbulent as the piranhas started to attack, causing them to thrash and panic. The friends desperately tried to swim to the shore as quickly as possible, but the attack from the piranhas made it difficult for them to escape. The fear and confusion of the situation made the experience even more harrowing. Two of them managed to reach the safety of the shore, but their friend was not as lucky. The piranhas surrounded him while taking chunks out of his skin, and he was unable to keep himself afloat. The other two tried to help, but it was too late. The man disappeared beneath the surface of the water, and his friends were unable to save him. 
Divers were called in to search for the man's body, and it was eventually found the following day, floating 13 feet from the shoreline. The man's face, ears, and parts of his body had suffered lacerations caused by the piranhas. The extent of his injuries suggests that the man was in the water long enough for the predatory fish to attack him. The tragedy was ruled a tragic accident by investigators, who found no signs of any criminal activity. It remains unclear if the fear and stress of being attacked by the piranhas caused the man to drown, or if the fish themselves caused his death. The most typical cause of death from a piranha attack is usually blood loss from multiple bites, as piranhas have sharp teeth and a powerful bite that can tear away chunks of flesh. Additionally, piranhas are known to attack in large numbers, and a person who is attacked by a swarm of piranhas may receive hundreds of bites in a short amount of time. This can cause rapid blood loss and shock, which can lead to death even if the person receives medical treatment. In some cases, people who are attacked by piranhas may also suffer from infections, as piranhas are known to carry a number of harmful bacteria in their mouths. The wounds caused by piranha bites can quickly become infected, and if left untreated, this can lead to sepsis and death. Regardless of the details, this tragedy serves as a chilling reminder of the dangers that can lurk in even the most seemingly peaceful environments. The once tranquil lake now serves as a haunting reminder of the tragedy that took place on that fateful Saturday afternoon. Erica Marshall was a young and talented veterinary student who had a passion for helping animals. She was known for her gentle touch with horses and her dedication to her work. Born and raised in the small town of Medford, New Jersey, Erica always had a love for animals and decided to pursue a career in veterinary medicine. She was a hard worker and her talent and dedication earned her a place in the prestigious veterinary school Hartpury College in England. It was at Hartpury College where she met Kieran, the love of her life, and they eventually got married in November after being together for a little over a year. After their wedding, the newlyweds moved to Ocala, Florida, where Erica was offered a role at the Kentucky Equine Sports and Rehabilitation Center. She worked as a hyperbaric chamber operator running the chamber for two years, where she treated two to six horses every day. Horses are typically treated in a hyperbaric chamber on the recommendation of a vet to speed up recovery times for certain injuries. One fateful day while Erica was monitoring a horse receiving oxygen therapy for a condition called EPM, the animal kicked through the wall of the pressurized hyperbaric chamber causing an explosion that would change the course of her life forever. The horse was not sedated and had been in the chamber four times before with no previous issues, became spooked and was kicking its steel-clad hooves to get out. The horse managed to kick through the padding inside the chamber to the outside metal wall, creating a spark when its metal shoes scraped along the wall. The spark ignited the pure oxygen, causing a huge explosion that killed Erica instantly. Sorsha Monnelly, who was 33 years old and from Ireland, was also injured in the blast and was airlifted to Shands Hospital in Gainesville with serious injuries. She underwent surgery but thankfully survived. The horse, a beloved and valuable animal, died instantly. The loss of the horse was felt by its owners and trainers, who described it as a member of their family. The explosion was so powerful it blew apart several exterior walls of the veterinary and hospital and could be heard up to 30 miles away. The immediate and intense force of an explosion can cause severe damage to the body, including blunt force trauma, injury to internal organs, and severe burns. Broken debris can be thrown at high speeds near the explosion, and in some cases, 
The sudden change in pressure from an explosion can cause a person's lungs to collapse, leading to suffocation. All these factors together were enough to cause the death of Erica and the horse. News of her death spread quickly, and those who knew her were heartbroken. Her husband, who was working nearby at the time, was devastated. He remembered Erica as his soulmate and the love of his life. He said, Erica had a way with animals that was truly magical. She was so gentle and kind, and the horses just seemed to trust her. It's a tragedy that she was taken from us so suddenly. As the equestrian community mourned the loss of Erica, questions were raised about the safety of pressure chambers in veterinary schools. It was revealed that the chamber, where the explosion occurred, had a history of malfunctions and had not been properly maintained. In response, Erica's husband filed a lawsuit against the veterinary school, seeking to hold them accountable for her death and to ensure that such a tragedy never happens again. The pressure chamber was a crucial part of the veterinary school's facility, and its closure following the tragedy had a significant impact on the local equestrian community. As the lawsuit made its way through the courts, the equestrian community came together to honor Erica's memory. They held a memorial ride in her honor, and many young, aspiring veterinary students were inspired by her passion and dedication to animals. Erica Marshall was more than just a talented and caring young woman. She was a shining light in the equestrian community. Her tragic death will always be remembered, and her legacy will live on through the animals she helped and the people she inspired. The lawsuit against the veterinary school serves as a reminder of the importance of safety and maintenance in such facilities, and it is hoped that it will bring about positive changes in the industry, ensuring that another tragedy like Erica's never happens again. The Gulf of Mexico is a picturesque body of water that boasts breathtaking scenery and crystal clear waters. The warm sun, soft sandy beaches, and the lush vegetation that lines the shore make it an idyllic destination for boats. Boating enthusiasts flock to the Gulf of Mexico, drawn by its beauty and the many opportunities it provides for water-based activities. On March 20, 2008, however, a woman's life was cut tragically short here in an accident that shocked the world. 47-year-old Judy K. Zagorski was a woman who lived life to the fullest. A loving wife, mother, and grandmother, she was known for her kindness, her infectious smile, and her love of adventure. Judy and her husband were sailing on the calm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, surrounded by breathtaking scenery. The sun was shining and the breeze was gentle as they dropped anchor in a peaceful cove. The sound of the water lapping against the boat was the only thing to be heard as Judy settled in for a relaxing day in the sun. Her husband, meanwhile, was busy fishing, casting his line out into the tranquil waters in search of a catch. The sun was warm on their skin and the fresh air filled their lungs, making for a truly idyllic experience. Judy and her husband Richard were completely absorbed in their own activities, completely at peace and in harmony with the world around them. Suddenly, their peaceful day took a tragic turn when a huge spotted eagle ray leaped from the water, slamming into Judy's head and leaving her unconscious and severely injured. The impact was so forceful that it shattered Judy's skull as she fell to the deck of the boat. With no time to waste, her husband sprang into action to perform CPR and check her vitals. Despite his efforts, her pulse was weak and she was unresponsive. Meanwhile, the 75-pound spotted eagle ray lay on the deck of the boat, its massive body flopping around as it tried to regain its footing. Despite the chaos around him, Judy's husband remained focused on his wife, trying to revive her and praying for a miracle. With the beautiful surroundings of the Gulf of Mexico seemingly a million miles away, all that mattered was Judy's life 
and her husband's desperate efforts to save her. Despite his best efforts, however, the clock was ticking and time was running out. With each passing moment, the reality of the situation became clearer. The once peaceful day on the water had taken a terrifying turn, and Judy's life was in grave danger. Starting the boat's engine, he rushed back to shore. With his phone battery dead, he frantically searched for someone who could call for help. Luck was on his side when a kind stranger offered to use their phone to call an ambulance. The ambulance arrived within minutes and rushed Judy to the hospital. The medical team worked tirelessly to save her, but her injuries were too severe, and she passed away. Judy's husband was left to pick up the pieces, grappling with the sudden loss of his beloved wife. Spotted eagle rays jumping out of the water is a relatively rare occurrence. In most cases, eagle rays prefer to swim close to the ocean floor and avoid jumping out of the water. However, in some circumstances, such as attempting to escape a predator such as a shark, they may jump out of the water. It's possible that the spotted eagle ray jumped out of the water as a result of being startled by the proximity of Judy's boat. The ray may have mistaken the boat for a predator, such as a shark, and jumped out of the water in an effort to escape. The death of Judy K. Zagorski was a tragedy. She was a woman who lived life to the fullest and was taken too soon. She will always be remembered as a loving wife, mother, and grandmother, and a woman who brought joy and happiness to everyone she met. Her husband, Richard, was deeply affected by the trauma of the accident, and in an interview, he spoke of the sound of the impact and the sight of his wife's broken body, images that would stay with him forever. The images of his wife's tragic, final affliction.